What's up everybody it's David. Concrete in a tiny house? Sounds expensive right? But what if I told you it's affordable, strong and well insulated? Meet concrete foam tiny houses. Fireproof, mold resistant and durable. All while being easier on your wallet than traditional construction. Seriously, this isn't your grandpa's concrete. This stuff is lightweight, energy efficient and surprisingly DIY friendly. Today, we're diving into how you can build your own concrete foam tiny house on a budget, breaking down the cost, the plan, land considerations, and the pros and cons. Stick around because this could be the most affordable and durable home solution you've ever heard of. Please subscribe to my channel. So, what exactly is a concrete foam tiny house? It's not just pouring regular concrete into a mold. We're talking about aerated concrete, also known as cellular concrete. This mix of cement, sand, water, and foam creates air pockets, making it lightweight and well insulated. Think of it like the love child of concrete and styrofoam, except it's fireproof, mold resistant, and lasts for decades. This stuff is specially formulated to be durable, pest resistant, and it bonds directly with the concrete. The result is a building material that's strong like concrete, but light enough to be cut with a handsaw. So we've got strength, insulation, and affordability all in one package. Not bad, right? Okay, let's talk numbers because a tiny house isn't truly budget-friendly if the cost keeps adding up. Keep in mind, these are estimates. Final costs depend on location, size, and DIY efforts. Estimated cost for a DIY concrete foam, tiny house, around 300 square feet, concrete foam material, $3,000 to $5,000, Foundation, $2,000 to $4,000. Roofing, $1,500 to $3,000. Windows and doors, $1,500 to $3,000. Shop around for the best deals. Plumbing and electrical, $3,000 to $5,000. Interior finishes and appliances, $2,000 to $4,000. Total cost, $12,000 to $25,000 for a livable tiny home. Let's get our hands dirty and talk about the building process. Step 1. Choose your design, this is the fun part. Sketch your ideas and maximize space. Step 2. Prepare your land, you'll need a flat, stable surface. Step 3. Pour the foundation. A simple concrete slab will do the trick. Step 4. Create foam concrete blocks or panels. Buy prefabricated panels or make your own blocks. Let's continue with our step-by-step -step plan. Step 6. Install roofing. Once your walls are up it's time to put a roof over your head, literally. A lightweight metal roof or even shingles will work great for a concrete foam tiny home. Make sure it's properly insulated to keep those energy bills low. Step 7. Plumbing and electrical setup. This is one area where I highly recommend hiring professionals unless you have experience. Properly plan your plumbing and electrical systems in advance to avoid costly changes later on. Step 8. Interior finishing and insulation. Now for the fun part, making it feel like home. The great thing about concrete foam is that it already provides excellent insulation, so you won't need to add much extra. We've talked about the what and the how, but now let's address the where. Before you start mixing concrete and stacking blocks, let's talk about where you can legally, and strategically, park your concrete foam tiny home. Best locations for a concrete foam tiny home, first up, rural areas. These often have more relaxed zoning laws when it comes to alternative housing options like tiny homes. Plus, land is usually cheaper in rural areas, stretching your budget further. Another great option is off-grid land. This is ideal if you're looking for self-sufficiency. Just make sure you have access to essential resources like water and solar power. Now, if you prefer being closer to civilization, look into backyard ADUs or accessory dwelling units. These are becoming increasingly popular, but check your local zoning laws to see if they're permitted in your area. The bottom line, before buying land or even starting the building process, check with your local zoning office to make sure you can legally build a concrete foam tiny home on your chosen property. Why choose concrete foam over traditional wood or metal tiny homes? Here are the biggest advantages that make this material a game changer. First up, affordability. As we discussed earlier, the materials themselves are generally cheaper than traditional building materials. Plus, if you're DIYing it, you're saving big time on labor costs. This means you can get into a brand new, custom-built home for a fraction of the price of a traditional house. Next, let's talk about durability. 
Concrete foam is fireproof, weather-resistant, and it laughs in the face of termites and mold. Unlike wood, which can rot, warp, or become infested, concrete foam stands strong against the elements. And let's not forget about energy efficiency. Those tiny air pockets within the concrete act as natural insulators, keeping your home warm in the winter and cool in the summer. This translates into lower energy bills for you, which is a huge win in the long run. Finally, let's talk about the environmental impact. Concrete foam typically uses less cement than traditional concrete, resulting in a lower carbon footprint. Now, it wouldn't be fair to only talk about the good stuff without addressing the potential downsides. Because let's be real, no building material is perfect. So, here are a few disadvantages to consider before you go all in on concrete foam. First, while concrete foam is strong, it's not as dense or structurally robust as traditional solid concrete. This means it might not be suitable for multi-story homes or areas with extreme weather conditions like hurricanes or earthquakes without additional reinforcement. Second, working with concrete foam requires proper mixing and curing. If the mixture isn't right or if it doesn't cure properly, it can weaken the overall structure. So, if you're going the DIY route, make sure you do your research and follow instructions carefully. Third, if you have limited DIY experience, making your own concrete foam blocks from scratch can be challenging. It requires specialized equipment and a bit of a learning curve. If you're not comfortable with this aspect, opting for pre-made panels might be a better choice. Always check with your local building department before starting any construction. So after weighing the pros and cons, is a concrete foam tiny house the right choice for you? Well, that depends on your individual needs, budget, and DIY skills. If you're looking for a highly affordable, energy efficient, and relatively easy to build tiny home that can withstand the test of time, then yes, concrete foam is definitely worth considering. It's a great option for those who are comfortable with DIY projects, want a durable and low-maintenance home, and are looking to minimize their environmental impact. However, if you're on a tight timeline, have limited DIY experience, or live in an area with strict building codes, you might want to weigh your options carefully. The key is to do your research, understand the pros and cons, and decide if concrete foam aligns with your vision and lifestyle. So, what do you think? Would you ever build a concrete foam tiny home? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more budget-friendly home ideas. Who knows, maybe concrete foam tiny homes are the future of affordable and sustainable housing. They're durable, energy efficient, and easier on the wallet than traditional construction. If you're looking for a unique and cost-effective way to build your dream tiny home, concrete foam might just be the answer.